Hey, God bless everyone. Sammy D, man, I'm here. Bing, bang, boom, in my psychedelic shack. That's where it's at. And I want to bring a short message to you. First of all, I want to appreciate you. Watching my videos, some of you press like, give me a thumbs up. Others give me a thumbs down. I appreciate you too. It's all the same. It comes with the territory. It doesn't bother me. I'm doing it as on to the Lord. And he gives me two thumbs up. But I want to share with you a word from God's biblical truths. And I want to play a little music here with my congas. But I want to share with you this one thought. I was watching a video earlier online. And this preacher had a pretty big church. This must have been before this uh, pandemic with the shutdown because the church was packed. But he was preaching against the act of homosexuality. And I agree with what he said because the Bible does not condone it. It condemns it. It says it's a sin. God is against it. He created Adam and Eve, man and women in marriage. But my problem with his message, although I agree with what he was saying, it was truthful. He didn't say nothing bad, but it, he, his delivery, the way he was saying, he was like batching, ping, ping, people over the head with the truth. He wasn't showing mercy. There was no compassion. And I believe this. I believe that God is a God of compassion. And I believe that God looks at sin as sin. There's no category for sin. Sin is sin. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. And uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. We all have sin. All of us. None of us are... Uh, uh, kept from sinning. We all have sin. That's why we need a savior. But the way he delivered his message, if you're going to preach about any sin, because it could be any sin. Listen, there's sin in the church of gluttoning. He was a little bit thick. Gluttoning, overeating, overindulging, gossip, backbiting, bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred. That's a sin. Even when you don't give your tithes, you're stealing from God. I heard one preacher say, a lot of you folks came into this church in a stolen car. You're wearing a stolen suit. Everybody's looking around. I ain't stealing no car. Well, if you stole from God to buy your car, you didn't give your tithes, you stole from God. So the Bible says when you don't give your tithes, you're stealing from God. Malachi, you, the book of Malachi. You're stealing from God, so you bought that car with God's money, so it's stolen. I understand his logic. But uh, if you're going to preach about a particular sin, preach it in love. You should have a broken heart because people in sin will go to hell if they don't repent. And there's nothing funny or fun about that. So I'm going to preach with a broken heart. You know, there are people struggling with their lifestyle, whether it's sexuality, whether it's with food, whether it's with greed for material things. They struggle. We don't know the struggle they have. We don't know the desires they have for God. So if I'm going to preach against a particular sin, I'm going to preach it in love. And why, why just homosexual? What about fornication? What about people in the church that are living together and not married? What about adultery? What about people that are married and are having affairs outside of marriage? Can we talk about that? Whatever you talk about, whatever sin, say it in love. God doesn't have a category for sin. We're all sinners. We're saved by grace. The only difference between a sinner and myself or you that have repented is we're repentant sinners. The Bible says that we are saved by grace. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. We are saved by grace, not from our own works, but because of faith in Jesus Christ, the grace of God. So if I'm going to preach against sin, I'm going to preach with a broken heart. Knowing where I came from, knowing God forgave me, and there are people out there that are struggling, and there are people that do not know the Lord that will come to know the Lord. If we reach them, if we teach them, if we preach to them in love, they will come to know the Lord, and God will transform them and use them. I remember some years ago when I was with Teen Challenge, David Wilkinson, the great late David Wilkinson, the founder of Teen Challenge, he testifies. I was sitting right there when he says that he was coming down 
from his room to preach to a group of youth. And he said he was going to come down on them and hit them hard with the word. And right before he got out the door, he fell to his knees and he heard the voice of God tell him, listen, be merciful, show grace, preach in love. The same way I reached you with love and mercy and grace, deliver that message with mercy, grace, and love. And you ought to have a broken heart when you preach to people that are in sin. And he said that turned his whole message around. That turned his whole life around. After that, he began to preach with a broken heart to sinners. I don't want to bat you over the head with the word. I don't want to come down on you because of your preference or lifestyle or your uh, whatever it is you're into. I want to talk to you about the love of God. You see, I always look at it this way. If you have a dog with an old bone, he's chewing on that bone. He's not going to give it up. You try to take it from him and he'll bite you. Ah! But if you throw him a piece of steak next to the bone, he'll look, let go of the bone and grab the steak. The world has that bone. That's all they know. Don't bash at them. Don't try to take it from them. They'll bite you. Throw them the piece of steak. Give them love. Show them there's a better way. The way that God loved us and the way that God won, won us over. Give them the love of God. Romans chapter 6 says that we come to the Lord in the newness of life. You see, we take off the old. You have old garments, old wine skin, your old lifestyle, man. Whatever it is you got into is you're wrapped up in it. God says that he'll take it from you. He'll remove the old. If any man, woman be in Christ, a new creature. And then you put on the new. You put on Jesus. He covers you with a new nature. He covers you with a renewed mind. He covers you with the spirit of love. And he anoints you with the oil of gladness. We come up. In the newness of life, we crucify the old, we take off the old, and we put on the new. So, my friend, don't forget where you came from before you go around bashing people and telling people about their sin. They know it. They need to hear about the love of God. God looks at us in three different categories, three types of people. Listen, listen to me, and I'm going to finish. Listen. He looks at the sinner that does not know the Lord. He's not converted. He's re not regenerated. He hasn't repented. He's living a sinful life. No time for God. No interest in God. He doesn't know God the way we were. Well, I'll speak for myself the way I was some years ago. The sinner man. And then or the carnal Christian. The carnal Christian is the one that got saved, got spirit filled. He got on fire for God. Perhaps you were like that at one time. You really love the Lord. You love going to church. You love praying, seeking God, worshiping God. But things happened throughout the years, maybe 20, 30, 40, and you became a carnal Christian. You're still saved. You're still on your way to heaven. But you're walking in the flesh. You're walking in the carnality of the desires of the flesh, the appetites. Uh, the gratifications of the flesh. You don't pray anymore. You don't read the Bible anymore. You're not even interested in spiritual things anymore. Those are carnal Christians. And then you have the spiritual man, the spiritual Christian. The spiritual Christian is hungry for God, has an appetite for God, wants to pray. His lifestyle is worship and praise uh, and uh, seeking the face of God, uh, hearing the music of the Lord, uh, spiritual music, psalm, psalms and hymns, uh, going to church. Uh, he knows there's three enemies, uh, the world, the flesh, uh, and the devil himself. Uh, and the spiritual Christian, uh, he prepares himself uh, for battle, uh, and he stays on fire for God. Uh, and that's what God wants from you and I to be spiritual Christians, to walk in love, uh, to walk in the joy of the Lord, uh, to walk in the fire of God. Uh, with us is a daily thing. You have to seek the Lord every day. You have to get closer to God every day. I've been saved 42 years. I want to be a spiritual Christian because God's called me to lay hands on people, to prophesy, to pray for people. I cannot do that if I'm walking in the carnality or the flesh desire. I got to do that in the spirit because the Bible says that the spirit 
wars against the flesh. So I want to walk in the fruits and in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells me in chapter 8 of the book of Romans, for the law, listen to it, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin. Did you get that? The law of the spirit of Christ, the spirit of life in Christ has made us free. You're free from the law of sin. I don't have to walk in sin. I don't have to be bound to sin. I don't have to give in to sin because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin. Listen to this here. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. We know this. For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But listen to the next one. I like this one. Being justified freely by grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God.
that in mind. If you're going to talk to people, talk to them in love. Stand before God before you talk to man. And God give you a heart of compassion, a broken heart in his presence so you can tell people about their sin. Some people are struggling. They don't want to live like that. I know when I was on drugs, I didn't want to do drugs. I didn't know any way out till I met Jesus. There are people that are struggling in all kinds of areas of their life. They don't want to live like that. They're miserable. It's you and I that can come with the spirit of love to reach them, to tell them about the love of God. Okay? God bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everybody. Listen to me right now. The Bible says, I'm going to touch, heal, and deliver. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, man. <laughs>